Here we are then on the great outdoors and for once we have a glorious winter sunny day to test the engine. So what I'm going to do is just briefly run through some of the procedures, procedures that you need to do before you run the engine and then enough talking and then we'll run the engine and I won't, I won't speak and we can just hear the engine running. Another thing is this is the generator unit really really nice that engine DIY have sent in to test very high quality like the whole the whole rest of the engine I'm not going to run this on this video because obviously there's an LED light and because it's so sunny you're not going to see that so um, I'll do a separate video when it's a little darker and then we can see that working but yeah really really nice that complements the engine really well so when it comes down to the engine itself, obviously before you even think about running the engine, all of these touch points here need to be oiled every time that you run the engine. I use this very fine Singer Super Oil used by gunsmiths and also Singer sewing machines. It's quite cheap, it's about six pounds and it lasts forever. But I think this is a very fine oil. So what I'll do, off, I'm going to do it off camera, but I'm going to literally go around, just put a drop of oil all of the surfaces. Now because this is a beam engine, we've got the cylinder itself, and there's no compression rings on the piston. So to achieve compression, what we have to do is we have to put some oil in the chamber before we start the engine. And I've noticed in other videos that haven't really shown you that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some steam, proper steam uh, compound oil which is a very very thick oil and I shall half fill the cylinder with steam oil. It will make a bit of a mess when the engine runs but that's the only way it's going to be kept lubricated and with compression. Now when it comes to the fuel I've tried a few variations on the fuel front because what you don't want and unfortunately it's inevitable, it's a shame really, but you tend to get soot comes up and it spoils this really fine brass brass boiler. I've tried all different stuff, um, rubbing alcohol is very very cheap, it does work, this is 70% isoprol alcohol. The higher the percentage of um, isoprol, in theory, the less the soot that you'll get. On the last one, I, I bought this, this, this was 99.9% .9%, but I still suffered a degree of soot. So we're going to try the more traditional method, so we're just going to go for methylated spirits here and we'll get soot, but I can't really avoid that. It's cheap. I'm oh, sorry, I almost forgot to say, I just took it for granted. When it comes to filling the water, do not, whatever you do, do not put just tap water in the boiler because that will produce lime scale and very quickly that will seize up the piston in the piston assembly. You need to use deionized water, it's quite cheap to buy on the internet or if you're in the UK there's plenty of it. You can capture rain water which is safe to use and just run it through a very fine filter to filter out any sediment and you can use that in the boiler but I think it's best really with, with, with you know with the cost of this model I think it's best to use proper deionized water and I'm going to put in probably around about 40 or 50 millilitres into the boiler right let's get on with it then
And there you go. Isn't it a lovely thing? It runs really, really smooth. You do have to, every now and then, just adjust the output of the boiler as the water level drops down to keep it at a consistent speed. Um, a couple of criticisms, it is losing a little bit of pressure through the whistle there, it's not a complete seal and because the boiler is so small it does require, as I say, a little bit of adjustment just to keep it running. You don't want it to run fast obviously but you do need to just make sure you keep a tap on the uh, boiler pressure because it will stall. But isn't it lovely? It makes a really nice sound and the smell of this hot steam oil here from the piston it's sort of evaporating. It's got, it's got that real smell of a steam engine, it's lovely. Slightly lose pressure now. And there we go. So we're just, just starting to lose a little bit of pressure so we're just going to shut it down. And then we can uh, hear the whistle at the end there. But yeah, it's really, really nice. Um, they've done a great job. As I say, I will run the little generator and the little light on a separate uh, video, but what a, what a lovely thing to own. It's amazing that they can bring it in at this price point. I know it's not cheap, but even so. Okay, I think we'll finish the video. We'll just switch on the whistle and see what that sounds like. There you go, yeah it really works. So I think that's it for the end of the video. If you missed the first one, when I, when I built the kit, there'll be a link in the description if you want to see how it's, uh, how it's all put together. But as always, I'd like to thank you for your view time. I do appreciate you tuning in to Freddy in the Shed. And stay tuned for some radio stuff, also some more steam engines. I think we'll fire up the SO2 as well. When we, we'll have both running at the same time. But as for now, as always, cheers guys, thanks for tuning in. Just give us a thumbs up before you go, I'd appreciate that. But uh, yeah, cheers, catch you on the next one. Fred's in the shed Where the magic gun falls Fred in the shed With his trusty CB He's a friend to the lonely On a frequency